Hi guys, I'm Clem and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on the different books I read during this summer. So this summer I ended up reading around 10 books. Uh, honestly, I hoped uh, to read more, but still, I'm still happy that I read like 10 books because it's a good, it's a good like number. So I'm really happy. I read some amazing stuff, some things that weren't as good as what I thought it was going to be. Anyway, I'm going to start right now because there's a lot of them. First, uh, in July, I participated in the reading rush and I managed to complete the reading rush. So for many prompts, I've read uh, Paper Girls Volume 3. So I've been talking about Paper Girls for a while now on my channel because I started this series this year. And now we're arriving at the point where I can't tell you what happens in this book because uh, if I tell you, you're going to get spoiled and I think you shouldn't get spoiled. Uh, but definitely check this book out, like this series, because it's really amazing and it's taking a path that I wasn't expected um, and I really like it. Uh, this one was really weird, but I think it's starting to make sense or at least we had some answers and I can't wait to see where the story is going to go because right now the girls are stuck somewhere and I want to know how they're going to get out and there's a lot of problems and I want to know how they're going to resolve them. So this one, I gave it, I think, uh, four out of five stars. Uh, it was really great. Again, oh uh, no, it's a spoiler. I'm not going to show you that, but you see the drawings are amazing. It's very colorful. You learn a lot about the different characters and I love that because they're not just like random girls. You really get to know them and I really enjoy that. So for the reading rush, I also read The Wicked King, which is the second book in the Folk of the Year trilogy by Ollie Black. So I've read, uh, what was the first one? The Cruel Prince. Yeah, The Cruel Prince during, during like March, during my quarantine. And I really enjoyed it and I wanted to read the rest. And this one is definitely not my favorite in the trilogy because nothing is really happening. You can sense that uh, Ollie Black is setting so many stuff for the last one, so the conclusion. And I think it's like a bit of a letdown because I was expecting so much more, like so much more action. I mean, it's pretty short and it could have been a bit longer, like, I don't know, to explore more things and to tell us more things, but no, she was just setting stuff for the next one. Also, she introduced the people, uh, like the mer people, but you don't really get to know them that much. I mean, you see their work, but it's not that much. Also, I was really disappointed because you don't get a much um, June and card in scene. Like you have two of them, like one time uh, they're about to have sex and another time they're kissing. And you're like, is it supposed to be enough? <laughs> because it is not. Like I want so much more. So yeah, also I was like, there was all that, like you could sense that they were like into each other but nothing was happening you're like i know you hate each other but you also love each other so please do something and concerning the end of this book it was not really surprising because um it's going to be a spoiler but i'm sure you all read it the fact that june became queen was like it was not going to be all perfect she was not going to go on the throne and say okay i'm queen it was sure that carden was plan planning something Either it was for love and it would have been a huge surprise or for politics and actually yes it was for politics but I really liked it even though it wasn't really surprising. So I ended up giving this book still 4 out of 5 stars because I had a good time but not the best time. This summer I read also Landline by Rainbow Roll. So I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars and actually it had been a long time since I read um, Anything by Rainbow Roll, and actually this one is one of her uh, adult fiction and it wasn't that bad. So in this book you're following, what's her name, Georgie and Georgie is like in her 30s and she's married to her husband and they have like two kids, maybe she's more, no maybe 30s, yes 30s I think. And they're in our couple it's not going great okay because Georgie is a screenwriter for TV and she spends so many time on uh, at work and she's not really spending time with her husband and her children 
and so for her husband it's too much and so at the beginning of the book uh, they're supposed to go um to uh her, uh her husband's parent for christmas but she learns that she finally got the deal she wanted like she's going to be able to create her own show with her best friend it's like her dream and so she can't go to christmas and so her husband leave without her with the, with the kid and georgie is like lost because uh she doesn't know what to think about like a relationship plus her husband is not answering a text or a call so it's really complicated and so one day she goes back to her mom like to sleep and in a mom there is um at her mom in a room there is a landline and she's calling it so, like she's calling her husband but actually she comes back uh, at the beginning of their relationship before they get married and so she talks to this version of her husband and from then like she's Think, thinking she's crazy or that like she's dreaming but in the end actually she's going to use this landline to actually fix a marriage and it was really interesting and I really liked it because um I read it pretty f fast and I don't know it wasn't not the best book ever but it was still a enjoyable book so yeah that's why I gave it three stars then I also read Nimona by, what's her name, Noelle Stevenson and I've been wanting to read this book for so long and I finally got it like uh, before the summer and thought so to myself I'm going to bring it with me in vacation and I'm going to read it. It was really great, I really liked it. So if you don't know what Nimona is, you're following the character of Nimona, this girl, and she's the psychic of a villain, but actually the villain is not... A normal villain in a way because he's not all bad because he has a past like he never chose to be a villain he wanted to be a hero but society made him a villain so he decided to be a villain but he doesn't really want to be one and you can feel that he's actually not one but the more interesting part is that Nimona actually you can you know from the beginning that there is a secret with her like she's hiding something but you don't know what and when you know it at the end I was like oh, I love it. I really loved it. Um, it was really interesting and maybe I'm going to reread it one day because it was cute, it was funny and it was amazing. So I gave it four to five stars. This summer, since I read The Wicked King, I decided to finish the trilogy by reading The Queen of Nothing by Ollie Black. So what can I tell you about this? Definitely nothing happens also in this one. I mean, not nothing but it's the conclusion to a trilogy and I was expecting so much more for this book I had high expectations and unfortunately I didn't get what I wanted um, because um, you can feel that there's going to be this huge battle like everyone is talking about it everyone is prepping for it and in the end nothing happens there's no battle and you're like what I wanted people to die and of course no one dies that's not funny I wanted to get my heart broken and nothing happened so please and also there is this huge moment where Cardin becomes a black snake and I was like what am I reading <laughs> what's happening it's coming out of nowhere he's here and he's becoming a snake and like everyone wants to kill him except Jude who wants to actually try to save the king and you're like, okay, that's nice. Uh, so it was really weird. The only thing I really, really enjoy about this is the Cardin and Jude relationship because finally we got some stuff. Like it was finally happening after so many time and I was here for it and I liked it. It was really amazing. Um, I think I have something else to say about this book, but I forgot. So yeah, if I had to say something about the whole um, trilogy, it's a good trilogy. I think the hype is a bit too much because for me, uh, the main thing like about this book is that it lacks action. Like you add action and you like more angst and I'm here for it, okay? The books could be longer, it would not be bad, okay? But still good. Also, I read the third book in the Lumber James uh, series. Uh, this one is called A Terrible Plan. So once again, this is a, a comic I've been reading for a while now, since it's the first, third one. Um, I'm Once again, I can't really tell you what's happening in this one. Uh, the only thing that was great uh, and that I can tell you is that uh, this time there is a different reality. 
and time traveling. I think this series is going to have everything you want, like goddesses, uh, dinosaurs, zombie, uh, time travel, parallel uh, universe, and all, uh, like you name it, you have it. Plus there is friendship and it's really amazing. For me, it's really why, what I like in this trilogy, uh, in this series, is the friendship between the different girls and also we're starting to get the love story between two of the girls and I'm here for it because it's just so cute. But once again, so far, nothing is really making sense. I'm not sure it's supposed to make sense at some point, but I'm still hoping that it's going to make sense that I'm going to see the link between everything because right now I'm a bit lost, but I'm liking it. This month also I read the graphic novel The Witches by Rondal and I read it because uh, it's done, like the drawings are done by one of my favorite French illustrator called Penelope Bajou. Uh, this exists in English and you should definitely read it because it's amazing. So basically she took the story of The Witches uh, by Rondal and she made it a, in a graphic novel. I really liked reading this book because I thought I'd never read The Witches or I knew nothing about this book, but actually when I read it, I remembered that I used to watch the movie all the time when I was a kid. So it was really like funny to see that and to realize that actually I knew the story and I liked it. Also, I think uh, Penelope Bajou did an amazing work with the drawings because her style fits perfectly the story. Like it's at the same time funny when it needs to be funny and scary or like like it doesn't make it like it make you uh, ill at his uh, when it needs to with witches and you're like mm, I don't really like that and I think she's done an amazing job uh, I really liked it I gave it four out of five stars it was really amazing if you have the opportunity to read it uh, you should definitely do it because it's really amazing also this month I read The Reader by Tracy Shi. so this is the first book in the Reader trilogy I think it's called and honestly, I never thought I was going to enjoy this book as much because it's a gift my sister gave me and when I read the synopsis of the blurb uh, in the back, I didn't really understand what was the point of this book or what was going to happen. So just so you know, uh, the book is happening in a world where no one can read, no one actually knows what is reading or what is a book. And one day you're following the main character, Sefia, and Sefia is actually with her aunt Nin and they're like like outcast and runaways and actually Sefia has a book but she doesn't know it's a book and so one day uh, her aunt Nin get um, captured for the book and so Sefia is going to try and actually she's going to read to understand the story because the book is a mysterious object where you have all the history of the world, the past, the present and the future and everyone wants this book, okay, because uh, it's important and also you have a war that's coming and it's really, you see, I can't even explain it because it's really blurry and full of mystery and if I tell you too much, I'm going to spoil you and actually you should read it because it's really great and I love the whole thing about the book, how it links everyone and everything in the world. I really enjoyed it. The world building is amazing because, I don't know, there is also this mysterious place called the library where you don't really know what people are doing in the library, but they're for a book, but they're not necessarily reading it. Like, really weird, but really interesting. Also, in this book, uh, Sefia, the main character, has an amazing relationship with the boy she's rescuing at some point. I love them together. They're just cute and amazing friends. <laughs> I lived for them. So this book was really a huge surprise and I really liked it. I ended up giving four out of five stars. And I'm definitely going to pick the second two books. And last but not least, I'm going to talk about the two audiobooks I've listened during the summer. So the first one I listened was Cursed. And you know, I read it because it was adapted uh, on Netflix. And I didn't really like it. It took me forever to finish because I didn't care about the story. It was messy at so many times that like I got lost and a lot of things didn't make sense. And I was really expecting something as good as the Guinea's Deception. Like I was I wanted a good retelling of uh King Arthur, but here it didn't really make sense. They were talking about so many things and I was like, why are you adding this to the story? Like it was already messy and now you add this. I was like, 
why and also you have the characters okay so you have the lady of the lake it's like Nimoa the Nim Nimue, Nimue, that's her name, the main character, she doesn't know but she's going to become the Lady of the Lake because she's asked to protect um, Excalibur. Also you have Arthur, but Arthur is never going to be king. Okay, it's... <laughs> Why do you call him Arthur if he's not going to be King Arthur? Because you have Arthur Pendragon, is supposedly father, and they have nothing to do. And you're like... So what? Merlin is actually the do the father of Nimue, so the father of the Lady of the Lake, and you're like, what? He wants to destroy Excalibur, and you're like, so many things are happening. Plus, the Nimue is a fey girl, and there are those people called the Red Paladins who want to kill the fey girl because they represent the Catholics. Also, in the middle of the Red Paladins, you have Lancelot. Like, Lancelot is not supposed to kill people, guys. I know it's a retelling, but... Can we do things right and not like mess the story? Because for the, with the Gunnivers Deception, it's well done, okay? You're keeping the characters and a little bit what they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do, like their qualities. And here in Cursed, it was a huge mess. So it was really complicated to follow. Plus, I was not really into it, so <laughs> it was even harder to follow. Um, is there anything good I can say about this book? I'm not sure. I think I gave it 3 out of 5 stars, but I don't think it's too high for the book. Maybe I'm going to like revise my uh, rating downward, because maybe 2 stars would be good for this book. Um, so yeah, and I know this review doesn't make a sense, but basically, if you don't understand what I just said, you understood the book. Because it doesn't make sense for me. There are so many plot holes and things that... Oh, it was hard to read it. And last but not least, the second audiobook I've listened to during the summer is The Deep by, I forgot the name, by Riva Salomon. And I read it because everyone was talking about it and it seems so cool and really an amazing read that I wanted to try it. First, I'm going to say that this book gets an A plus for being told by David Diggs. Um, <laughs> the first time I heard his voice, I was like, oh my gosh, it's my baby. Like, I know him from a Milton, and I know he has a band. And actually, I discovered that The Deep is inspired by a song the band of David uh, created called uh, Clipping. And I was so into it. I, from this point, I was interested. I wanted to know everything. After concerning the book in itself, I'm not sure I understood everything, I'm not sure I understood the meaning behind everything and the metaphor of the book because I think there's a lot of things I don't know to understand correctly this book but still it was really enjoyable and um, I want to say whimsical but not really whimsical like it felt like it, it came from another world and I liked it uh, if you don't know what the dip is, uh, you're following uh, Yatu, and Yatu is uh, is a mermaid slash siren. I don't really remember. So from the beginning, we're told that the bodies of African mothers on their way to the United States to become slaves, if they were pregnant, they were tossed into the sea, and so those body, like they became mermaid and they create this um, civilization under the sea of all those people that died, so of former slaves. Uh, I mean, they were still slaves when they died, but now they're not slaves anymore. And so you're following Yatu, and Yatu is the main character in the story, and she's also the historian of her um, people. And the historian is the one who has all the memory, and one day, each year, they, sh they shared this memory with everyone, the historians, and it's called the remembering. And Yatu doesn't want to be the historian because she's left with all those bad memories from the beginning and all the suffering and it's too much for her. So during the remembering, she leaves uh, and she, like the, her people are stuck with the memories and they become crazy because it's too much for them. They don't know how to handle all this pain and all this suffering. And so Yatu yeah, at the... <laughs> while they're suffering she goes to the land in order to meet what they call the two legs so the human 
And basically the book is about Yatu yeah, discovering more about herself but also about her people and who they are and their history and the fact that you can't live without your past. Like past doesn't have to define you but it's important especially for her and her people because they have such a hard past that they need to remember it because if they don't no one is going to remember it at some point. Once again, what I just told you must be really confusing because for me this book was also confusing but you see, cursed was confusing but bad but the deep is confusing but good because I felt like it was really deep in a way with, like the pun is no intended it's just for me this read was really really deep and I liked so many information I think to fully appreciate it but I still really enjoyed it Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. Tell me in the comments down below what you read during the summer. I would love to know and talk about this with you. Also, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. Bye guys!